Good afternoon, and welcome to our filmmaking class on uh, pre-production and casting. Uh, my name is Seth Limbaugh, and I'm with the Rutherford County Library System, uh, and we'll go ahead and uh, get started. Uh, I've got a little bit of a background um, in this. Uh, I have a degree in filmmaking production. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So we're kind of going to get down the checklist of what pre-production is. Uh, we're going to start with the script, then we're going to move to the budget, uh, then we're going to talk about the business a little bit, uh, we're going to talk about production heads, uh, we're going to go back and look at the script and kind of breaking that down, we're going to talk about storyboards, uh, then we're going to talk about locations, then casting the talent, uh, then the art department, then uh, permits and insurance uh, if they're needed, and uh, then scheduling, crew, shot lists, and then uh, tech and gear stuff. So, getting straight out of the gate with uh, your script. Um, you never want to start a production without a completed script or a mostly completed script. Uh, it is preferable that you have a completely locked script uh, that is ready for shooting. Um, that, is, that is typically what works best. Um, I can tell you the amount of times that people have pitched me ideas for films, and they're like, let's make a film, let's make a film. Uh, and uh, it has gone very poorly because they, they never gave me a script, and they just want to shoot with abstract ideas, and, and it just never works. So you just you want a solid script going into uh, the video production. Um, and so what that would look like is you would go either get a script writer or something like that, uh, or if it's a script that you've written yourself, but... Uh, you, you just want to make sure that you have a solid script. Um, a good rule of thumb for scripts, if you're looking in terms of like length uh, and like how long you think your film is going to be, is that a uh, one page is equal to one minute of screen time. Uh, that is a generalization. That's not always accurate, obviously. There are some exceptions to that rule. Uh, but typically, one minute equals one page. Uh, so if you're looking for time and things like that, that that's a good way to guesstimate your runtime. Uh, of most things. Um, next on the checklist is uh, your budget. Uh, you want to make sure that you have your budget finalized and solid. Um, filmmaking can be done on a cheaper budget, but you need to make sure that you know exactly what you're doing with the money and where that's going to go. Uh, there's lots of things that can eat into your budget. Um, yeah, and so you need to you need to be aware of that, uh, and, and and make sure that, that you are you are good. Um, so yeah, make sure you know how much money you have to start out before you go anywhere else. Uh, you need to make sure that you know if you're working with volunteers, if you're paying your cast and crew, which is preferred. Um, you need to know uh, how much your equipment's going to cost if you're rental, if you're using rentals, if you're going to. Uh, rent out locations, all of the things that we're going to talk about throughout this process, some of those things may cost money. So you just need to make sure that you've allocated your budget properly and uh, you know exactly where that money should go. Um, the next thing on the checklist uh, is your business. Um, because there is so much money that can go involved with this, there's permits and insurance, it is recommended that if you're doing this professionally, that you start your own business. Um, that is the best way to make, keep all of your, your ducks in a row because uh, sometimes you will need lots of contracts, uh, things like that. Uh, you'll have production crew release forms, contracts, 1099s that you might have to fill out for, for you know, if, if you're paying your, your, your cast or crew. Um, there's just a lot in the process that will make it so much easier than if you are creating an LLC or a business of some sort. Uh, instead of trying to do it independently under your own tax ID. Uh, it, I, I'm not going to get into the intricacies of starting a business. That could probably be a class all on its own, but uh, that is something you should definitely look into if you are planning to do, uh, if you're planning to make a feature film. Um, let's see. The next thing on the list is hiring your production heads. So, production heads, oops, sorry, thinking ahead of myself here. So you'll want a producer or a production coordinator. Uh, if that is you, then congratulations. But 
Uh, that needs to be someone who's going to oversee the entire film, oversee kind of all of the production heads, make sure everything is getting done, make sure everything's happening on time, uh, everything is going well. If there is too much for one producer to do, then that producer can hire or assign uh, assistant producers or, or, or things like that, line producers. So you want to get... Uh, you really, you really, really want to make sure that your producer is solid and ready because they are kind of the anchor of, of the whole thing. Um, producers, uh, just to kind of give you a definition, a lot of people ask exactly what a producer is. So I pulled up the exact definition for you and I'm going to read it off to you uh, so that way you know exactly what that is. And then we'll go through each different type of producer. So a film producer is a person who oversees film production. Either employed by a production company or working independently, producers plan and coordinate various aspects of film production, such as selecting the script, coordinating writing, directing, editing, and arranging financing. Uh, during the discovery stage, the producer finds and selects promising material for development. Uh, then they go and they hire a screenwriter. Um, and so, of course, if you've already got your script, then that part's already done. Uh, this is kind of more of like a huge huge like feature film uh kind of definition of it uh but primarily what the producer does is make sure that uh uh like that all of the logistics and business operations are happening all the day-to-day -day things are happening all of that's happening on your set on your film uh making sure that the film is delivered on time and within budget uh things like that um, also producers oversee marketing and distribution uh, and, and they help with a lot of things on the tail end after the film is completed. Um, and so there's that. So now, there's different types of producers, and I was actually fairly new to these term this terminology as well recently, because uh, I don't work a lot in, in, in that side of things. So I'm just going to kind of give you all the different types of producers and what, what, what their roles are. So there's the executive producer. Uh, the executive producer oversees all of the other producers working on the same project. Uh, they make sure the producers are fulfilling their roles on the given project. Uh, they manage all the film's finances and handling of the business aspects of the film. Um, on a TV series, an executive producer is often a writer and given credit in the creative capacity. On a feature movie, executive producers are often a person directly funding the movie or a person who founds the investors, a person who found the investors or a company that provided the fund. So that's what the executive producer does. A line producer. The line producer manages the staff and the day-to-day -day operations uh, every, and the physical aspects that are involved in the filmmaking and television. The line producer can be credited as produced by in certain cases. Uh, so that's kind of more of your typical producer, uh, like on, on smaller films. A supervising producer. A supervising producer su supervises the creative process of screenplay development and often aids in script rewrites. Uh, they can also fulfill the executive producer role of overseeing other producers. Uh, just a producer. Within the production process, the producer can oversee, arrange, manage, and begin every single aspect they are involved in the, every single stage for overall production success. So that's the overarching producer one that we, we've already talked about. Uh, Co-producer. Co-producer is a member of a team of producers, so essentially it's multiple producers all on one project. Um, a coordinating producer or production coordinator. A coordinating producer coordinates the work role of multiple producers who are trying to achieve a shared result. So if you have multiple producers on, on a project, the coordinating producer kind of makes sure that all of those producers are communicating well and uh, 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 doing their jobs for you. An associate producer and assistant producer, uh, they help the producer during the process. Uh, they can sometimes be involved in coordinating other jobs, such as creating people's schedules and hiring main talent. So they kind of assist uh, uh, the producer. Segment producers. A segment producer produces one or more specific segments of a multi-segment film or television production. Uh, so say that you're on like a, you, say that the movie has like three acts, uh, there's sometimes a segment producer who's just going to do act two or something like that. That, that. That's what a segment producer would do. Uh, and a field producer. A field producer helps the producer by overseeing all production that takes place outside the studio in specific locations for the film. So, say you've got you're you're on your set, you've got a ton of of scene shot, but you need to go out into this forest in another state uh, to to film this little bit. Uh, well, a field producer would be the producer that would go out and with the cast and crew and work out on location, and instead of while the other producers all stay in the studio. 
Um, so that is kind of uh, the definition of a producer and all the different types of producers. Um, after you get your producer, you want to get your director. Uh, the director is the person who uh, directs the cast and crew. Uh, they are the creative control process of the majority of the film. Uh, the, they, they give the direction of, where, of how the actors act, how the, the, the feel of the film, the pacing, all of those important artistic details uh, of the film. Um, and then with the director, you'll also want to get a cinematographer, and they handle the artistic camera side of things. So they handle the framing of the camera, how this film is going to look in terms of, of that, and they kind of co-coordinate with the director on that vision. Uh, but the cinematographer kind of has final say on like, okay, well, the framing looks like this. We want our lights to look like this. Uh, how, how do we want the feel and the mood to look uh, lighting-wise and, and uh, all of that? So they, they handle just the look and the, the camera aspect of, uh, of everything. Um, and so those are kind of the two main, or the, the three main things that you need. You want a producer, director, and a cinematographer. Those uh, up at the top. So, so you want you want to have those taken care of. Um, so now the next pro part of the process is you want to break down your script. Um, essentially, what breaking down the script is is you take the script and then you turn everything into a list of props, scenes, costumes, locations. It's just a series of lists of everything that you need for each thing. You go scene by scene uh, and you write a report on what you need. So say that like the scene one is a man digging a grave in uh, a graveyard uh, so what you'll need is a shovel and then you put that on the prop list uh, you'll need the location is you'll need a graveyard and so you put that on the locations list uh, costumes is you'll you'll need an outfit well, what is that person wearing while they're, they're digging the grave so you come up with that creative idea and then you you put that on the list um, and, you, and you see where where that goes uh, and then you uh, also make sure that the scenes are all blocked out and labeled out. This is scene one, this is scene two, uh, uh, things like that. Um, you just want to make sure that everything is, is completely completely turned into basically list form. It's, it's all turned into list forms. Um, the next thing is storyboarding. Um, storyboarding... Whoops, hold on. Okay. Uh, storyboarding... Is basically you've got your script in front of you uh, and so now you want to take that script from what looks like it's just all words on the page and it's uh, there's there's maybe some some direction visualized out in those words but but you, you've got nothing to see it so you want to get a storyboard artist or or the director does it or the cinematographer works with them uh, but uh, uh, but but yeah so you want the storyboard artist and the cinematographer and the director will all work together and kind of create a, what they want it to look like. So if the cinematographer has this idea of, okay, well, I want in this scene it to be a close-up of this person's face and they're looking off through the distance, so the storyboard artist would sketch out kind of what, uh, like a, a comic black and white, or it doesn't have to be black and white, some of them are in color, uh, but they'll sketch out kind of exactly how that framing would look uh, an idea of it, and they'll do that and go down the list and do that for each shot in each scene uh, and just kind of tell the entire story in, in a storyboard format so that way it's visualized out uh, and they can use that later on in production. Um, the next part is location scouting. Uh, so, location scouting is a process. <laughs> uh, location scouting is hard. Uh, you have to make sure that it is okay to film anywhere that you do not own the location of. Uh, they will need to sign a release form. Uh, if you are shooting out in the city and uh, if you're shooting on like in public property, you need to check with your local laws to see what is required to see if you need to get permits to shoot public or if it's just okay to shoot in public. Some, some locations are okay if you're in a public park or something like that. It's okay just to film out there. Other uh, counties and states uh, have, and cities have different regulations to where you have to go to town hall and get a permit and, and release, and sometimes you have to pay to film and things like that. Um, you need to get all of this done because the last thing you want is uh, someone showing up in the middle of your shoot day telling you you need to leave because 
you didn't have the proper permits or the proper permission. Um, so that being said, location scouting is hard because you want to find the perfect places. You want to go through the entire script, look at all of the locations that you need, and then start to piece it together. And the hardest part is making it consistent because you can have two really cool locations, but like they they don't exist side by side. And you need to make sure that you can visualize in your head well, what if they need to exist side by side in this film world? Will it look weird if the character is walking from point A to point B and the location changes? Uh, will that transition look smooth? Do you need to do something with that transition? Uh, there's a lot to think about uh, while you are doing that. Um, and again, you need to make sure that uh, the budget is like that, that all of your locations are affordable within your budget and that like you've got the proper. Uh, permits for it. Uh, so that's what you want to do. Um, next is casting. Casting is the hardest and biggest part of filmmaking in my opinion. Um, there's a lot of free casting websites you can go to. Um, let's see. I'm going to see if I can find some of them real quick for you. Uh, Backstage is one. Uh, Actors Access is another one. Uh, Casting Frontier, Casting Networks, Playbill, Mandy, New York Casting, and iActor are uh, all uh, uh, good casting websites. Um, those are all kind of those are the top eight according to uh, a list I'm looking at. Uh, I've personally used Backstage a lot for my casting. Um, that, that is a good a good one to use. Um, Backstage is free to use, and uh, it does have some paid features, but they're relatively cheap. So that is what I would say uh, go for and do. Um, but yeah, so casting your film. This is, this is important. The director will get together. Well, the director and the producer primarily do this. The cinematographer can be on, on there as well. Um, but, uh, but basically, you want to call in. You want to first, you want to get... A casting call out so you send out a casting call you you oh. Oh, sorry all right you still the casting call uh, you, you basically put in every character that you have a uh, position available for uh, you want to put an age range of the character uh, and a description of the character uh, and then you send that out you'll get um, headshots and, and ask for headshots in a resume you'll get a ton of headshots and resumes in return uh, and then uh, you'll want to start working on casting so the best way that i've done that is after i get my headshots and resumes in uh, i get a bunch of sides uh, which the sides are uh, portions of the script like taken out like cut out and uh, used for reading for auditioning purposes so you get some sides uh, and you send them out to your actors uh, or you invite your actors in, uh, depending on how you want to do this. If you're doing it in-house or in video, these are two different things. If they're doing a video thing, you send it to them, have them read the sides, and then send you the video back. If you're doing it in person, you can send sides in advance, or you can wait till they arrive and have them do a cold read. I prefer to send sides in advance. I, I like to see if people prepare a little bit, because I kind of like to see how that, how that looks. Sometimes I'll mix it up and get, have send out sides in advance but have a couple of cold read ones ready just so i can see how quick people are on their feet uh as well uh, whenever i do casting work um it's really just up to you uh and, and how how you want to do that um but yeah so then they will read uh and then you will want to bring them in and then you'll want to read them next to other performers because it's not just about one person it's about the cast as a whole so you want to have your like once you start narrowing things down you want to bring them in and have them read together until you finally have everyone reading the parts that you think that they might be set for reading together and then you can kind of make a decision there um, sometimes you do cast a and cast b sometimes sometimes there's two groups and it's going to be a completely different feel for the characters if like not better or worse just different uh, if you cast this group of people as opposed to this group of people um, and then you have to make uh, creative choices uh, on on what what suits your vision for your film uh, and and go with that. So 
there's a lot of mix and matching with actors and, and casting and, and all of that. Um, so yeah, uh, casting is very important. So once you get everyone cast, uh, you also want to upfront make sure your actors know if they are volunteers, if they're getting paid. Um, if they are volunteers, I would highly, highly recommend that you at the very least uh, pay and let them know that you're paying for any and all meals while they're on set, uh, as well as make sure that they are allowed to get a full copy of uh, the footage or the final product of your of your film, uh, and that they are allowed to use that in their production reel or the demo reel uh, that they might be sending out to people. Because sometimes uh, you'll get acting reels and stuff like that, and that they, they want to put that in there, so that way... Uh, they've got something to show for it that's kind of at least some sort of return if they're not getting the financial uh, uh, cut of, of the film. So if you can, though, it is always great to pay all of your crew and actors. So it, that is very important. Um, but yeah, so after you finish uh, uh, casting, uh, you'll want to then move on to your art department. Um, so art department uh you will need to hire someone to be in charge of your art department or volunteer um but essentially the art department does set dressings they do some basic props uh, uh stuff like that um you want to start getting those people ready so say that you've got a location that's like um say that you need to you, you you've got a house but you need it to look old and run down so you need the art department to come in and do cobwebs and Maybe put some like old couch covers on 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 furniture and, and things like that. That's that's stuff the art department would do. They would they would come into your location, take your location, and then modify it to look like your vision and, and, and the set that, that you're trying to need to get to look like. Uh, so you need to go ahead and start in pre-production, getting with them so that they can start shopping for cheap things, shopping for for everything that they need. Um, and kind of get a head start on all that before production starts. Uh, so you want to get them get them going as well. Uh, uh, at this point, uh, the best thing to do is also organize your file and documents. You probably have release forms from all of your actors. You've got permits for locations. You've maybe got insurance waivers. You've got uh, 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 all of that. Um, so start putting them together. Make sure you've got them all stored away. Uh, make sure that any information you need to have with you on set stays on set. Um, but the biggest things are your permits. Uh, permits for... Uh, like if you do not have a permit for your film location, you will be in a lot of trouble. You can get fined for it. There's a lot of issues. So just make sure you've got your permits. And make sure your permits are with you on set. Um, the next one is film insurance. Um, so it's kind of important to have insurance on set a lot of people don't i have not had insurance on set before as well it's if you're doing a small film and a small indie film i i think that you can sometimes get away with it however just know that like should someone get injured on your set something like that you could be held liable if you don't have insurance uh so make sure that like make sure that like you are insured if you can do it get, get insurance for your film because uh it's it, it 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 could save your life. It could save it could, it could save you a lot of money and a lot of headaches in the long run if something were to go wrong. Uh, people say nine times out of ten that you can get away without it, but you don't want to be the tenth person. Uh, <laughs> that is that is the biggest deal. So just try to get film insurance if uh, if at all possible. Um, the next thing that we have on the list is. Uh, you want to create your shoot schedule. Um, you need to make sure that all of your cast and crew know exactly when they need to be on set and when they need to be off set. Uh, you need to have you need to lock in your locations and your talent before all of this. But once you have locked your locations and your talent, uh, and and you, you know exactly when you're allowed to be where and who's free when. You've got to create a full schedule blocked out from scene A to scene whatever the ending scene is. <laughs> the last one uh, that you have, like from scene one to, to scene to scene five or, or twenty or thirty or, or whatever. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, uh, all of that is scheduled out to where 
shot 1A, shot 2B, shot 3C, like, all of those are on Monday, January 7th, uh, at 3 p.m., or something like that, and, like, and then on there you'll be like, who's to call? It's, like, call the, the three people in your cast who might be called that day, but it won't be everybody. Uh, so make sure they have call times, uh, and all of that listed on the schedule, um, Typically, what I do for call times is uh, crew call times are usually two to three hours before cast call times, unless there's heavy makeup involved. Uh, if there's heavy makeup, everyone's getting there early, but if not, because it usually takes crew longer to set up than it does for the cast. Um, so I usually get crew there about two to three hours before I get cast. There. Um, and that's just my, my way of doing it. Uh, everyone has their own way of doing it, so feel free uh, to, to come up with your own uh, methods there for that. Um, but yeah, so you want to, to make sure that that schedule is, is solid and locked uh, before day one of shooting. Um, I also would recommend uh, giving yourself pickup shoot days uh, at the end of your schedule because there's going to be a strong chance something's going to go wrong on a shoot day and you're going to have to postpone something or set it aside. So give yourself some pickup days uh, afterwards and make sure everyone knows that, like, hey, anyone needs to be available. Like, all cast and crew need to be available on these pickup days in case we have to come back and pick up something and, and, and reshoot uh, something. Uh, we won't know who or what yet, but just everyone be available on these three days or so, so that way you're you're locked in uh, for for that, and you don't have to like try to scramble to figure out something last minute. Um, the next thing is you want to have a crew roster uh, for the production. Uh, you want to make sure that you've got basically it's a sheet that you'll have with you on set, and it's who's got to be there and when. Uh, and uh, kind of all of their information. It'll have their phone numbers, it'll have their email addresses, all contacts, uh, and you also want to cast roster as well. Um, but you want to have all these things with you, so that way if someone's late or running late, you can just quickly pull up the crew or cast roster, uh, realize, like, go down, find the person, and uh, uh, yeah, go down, find the find, find you need, call them, be like, hey, where are you? Oh, you're running a few minutes later, you're cool, or Oh, no, you're not coming. Okay, well, I'll never work with you again. See you later. <laughs> uh, or whatever whatever the situation might be. Um, that is... Uh, the, 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 but yes, but it is very important to have a crew roster. It is important to have all of the contact information for all of your cast and crew. Phone numbers, email addresses, uh, home addresses. I, I, I want home addresses, too, in case any know where this person lives, if they are traveling far away. Um, another thing is make sure that... Uh, for um, uh, meals and lunches and stuff, make sure dietary restrictions might be listed on these rosters as well for the production team, so that way they know, like, if so-and-so's on set this day and they are vegetarian, they make sure that there's a vegetarian option for, for them to eat. Uh, uh, things like that. Make sure your, your cast and crew are well taken care of, and uh, having a, a good list like that is, is good for that. Um, the next thing is, is your shot list. So now that you've blocked everything out, you want to do a shot list. Uh, and this is more for the cinematographer uh, to do. Uh, and they'll work with uh, your director to do this. But it's essentially every single shot and what needs to happen. Are we... Uh, because there's... In one scene, if there's two people talking to each other, you're going to want to have it to where there's someone... The camera's shooting over this person's shoulder. And the camera's shooting over this person's shoulder so you can cut back and forth. And then you might want a wide shot so you can see both... Oops, a wide shot so you can see both people. Uh... And so that's three different shots. That's three shots for one scene. Uh, and that's kind of a, a standard. But then you'll want, like, say this person picks up something and, like, they've got a piece of paper and they need to read it. So you'll want to do an over-the-shoulder close-up of, of what they're reading. And so you want to have that shot listed. Uh, you, you want every single little thing that, like, you could cut to listed. I always go above and beyond. I prefer to have a larger shot list than what I might end up cutting around uh, just because... Uh, I like having options when I'm in the editing bay on, on what to cut, uh, but but that is up to you completely on how, how you do that. Um, but having a shot list makes sure you don't miss anything, you don't leave anything out on shoot days, and also keeps you organized so that way everyone knows, okay, well, we're doing this shot next, this shot next. They, they, they can read it, they can be like, okay, we got to set up for this. 
people doing lights and audio know kind of where to start moving to uh, if they can read the shot list and know exactly what's coming up next. Um, and then uh, the last thing is uh, your tech and equipment rentals. Um, you need to make sure that you've got the gear for your, your thing. You need to make sure that you've got a director of your director of photography or your cinematographer uh, uh, has what they need. Um, they need you need you'll need a gaffer and a grip, uh, someone who's running electrical and someone who's holding, uh, uh, who's who's doing lights. Uh, you need to make sure that you've got all of your equipment uh, together. Uh, there are rental companies all around. Uh, if you're local here, there's uh, uh, several good rental companies in Nashville. Um, that you can look up. Um, and yeah, you want to make sure you have all of your lighting equipment, your sound equipment, boom poles, uh, uh, your camera, your lenses, uh, all of that. And uh, when you get those rented, make sure that you've got your rental agreements, make sure that you know exactly when you've got them for, when they're scheduled for, all of that. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's the last thing you want to get ready. Uh, and you get your equipment, and then you go out, and uh, that's the end of pre-production. Then you're in the production mode. Uh, and you, you, you go out on the field and you shoot your film and, and you do all that, which uh, is something that we will cover in a future uh, thing. So that's it. That is, that is kind of the rundown on, uh, on the pre-production and how that works in the film industry. Um, after that, after pre-production, you go into production. Like I said, you shoot your film. Uh, and then you go into post-production where you edit your film uh, and, and all of that stuff as well. Um, I'll be covering a little bit of some production stuff uh, soon. The next one I'll be covering is lighting. Um, and due to COVID restrictions, I'm not sure if we'll be able to actually uh, do any in-person lighting, but I might talk about some lighting in some uh, other films and we'll analyze it and we'll talk about the different lighting styles and things like that. Uh, and then another one is editing a scene, which if I can get some footage that I can edit together, we'll, we'll look at uh, what editing a short scene together looks like and uh, uh, how that works. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for attending our first uh, class on film production. Uh, again, my name is Seth Lemma. I'm with the Rutherford County Library System. Um, and yeah, we'll open the floor to any questions. Uh, so if you've got any, uh, Please feel free to go ahead and put them in the chat now. And uh, yeah. And we'll just wait around for a second and see if there's any questions. And uh, yeah, I'll be happy to answer them for you. If not, I'll see you in the next class. All right, well, it looks like we're not getting any questions, so we'll go ahead and wrap up a little early today. Uh, thank you all for attending. I hope you attend future filmmaking classes. We'll have uh, one that's uh, for lighting and then one that's called shooting a scene, although uh, that one might be modified just a little bit due to COVID. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how we're going to do that one. But uh, yeah, we, I hope to see you at the future classes. Thank you.